Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 11 part is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us first discuss the pre-fertilization events. Now what are pre-fertilization events? The events that take place prior to fertilization. Now, even before the fusion between the male and female gamete take place, before that also there are certain changes that need to take place. The body needs to prepare itself for the fusion to take place. So, all this preparation comes under pre-fertilization events. So, what are the events that are categorized under pre-fertilization event? One is gametogenesis and the other is gamete transfer. Now, for fertilization to take place, what do you need? You need the gametes because fertilization is fusion of gametes. So, for that you need to form the gametes. The gametes need to be formed. So, gametogenesis is one thing that has to happen in pre-fertilization event. That is formation of gametes. And what is gamete transfer? Now, once the gametes are formed, both male and female, they need to meet each other so that fusion can take place. So that transfer of gamete, so that they can be brought together for the fusion, that is called gamete transfer. So gametogenesis is formation of gametes and gamete transfer is bringing the gametes together for fusion to take place because that is important. If the gametes are not brought together, then there is no point formation in the formation of gametes because until and unless they meet, until and unless they fuse together, nothing is going to happen. So let us now talk about gametogenesis. Now as I said, gametogenesis is the process of gamete formation the male gamete, there is one male gamete and one female gamete. The male gamete uh, in heterogamous situation where the um, gametes are not identical to each other. In that case, the male gamete is called sperm or antherozoid and the female gamete is called egg or ovum. So generally sperm and egg are the terms which are commonly used because they are easy to remember also. So now the question is how are these sperms and eggs formed inside the body? So that is what we will understand in the process of gametogenesis. So let us first talk about plants. So in plants we again have specific male and female reproductive structures which is the reproductive organ of a plant, it is the flower. So flower has all the reproductive structures, the male and the female reproductive structures. Now let us look at the male and female reproductive structures in case of plant. Because it is very important that we understand the reproductive structures in plants and animals before we try to understand how the gametes are produced. Now when we talk about plants, we all know that the reproductive organ of a plant is flower, right? Now, the flower in a plant can be of different types based on the male and female reproductive structure. Now, a flower can be said as unisexual if either male or female reproductive part is present in it. So, in this flower, uni means one. The word uni itself means one. That means it is expected that either of the sexes will be present in this plant. Either the male reproductive part will be present or the female reproductive part will be present. Now, which is the male reproductive part of a flower? It is just a recap because I am not going to uh, tell you the structure of the flower once again because we have already studied it in our junior classes. So, male reproductive part is the stamen. And female reproductive part is the pistil or the carpel, whatever you call it, they are the same. So either stamen or pistil should be present in it, then the flower is said to be unisexual. Now if stamen is present, then it is a male flower because the male reproductive part is present. Similarly, if the female reproductive part is present, then it is a female flower and it is called pistilet. So the flower with stamen is staminate, the flower with pistil is pistilate. Now examples of unisexual flowers are papaya and watermelon. So this is about the flower. Now the plant which consists of either male flowers or female flowers, they are known as dioecious. So di means two. 
So dioecious would mean that either the male or the female flowers are present in this plant. It is also known as heterothallic. So these are the examples of unisexual flowers. So here you can see this is how the male flower looks like and this is how the female flower looks like. Now bisexual plants are those if both male and female reproductive parts are present in the same plant, so in the same flower. So then that flower is said to be bisexual, bi means two. And any plant which has both male and female flowers in the same plant that is said to be monoecious. So monoecious and homothallic these are the terms used for the plant. So if the plant has both male flowers as well as female flowers that is a monoecious plant. Right? So examples would be china rose, mustard they are all examples where bisexual flowers are seen. Now similarly in case of animals based on the male and female reproductive structures man animals can be unisexual or bisexual. Unisexual would mean that they possess either male or female reproductive organ. So if they have a male reproductive organ it is a male. For example, in human beings you have male and female, right? So the males will have the male reproductive organs and the females will have the female reproductive organ. So individuals are either male or female. So examples would be human beings or cockroach, they are all unisexual. That is, it has to be either male or female. Now bisexual means both the reproductive organs, both male and female would be present in the same organism. So one organism possesses both male and female reproductive organs. So these individuals are known as hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodite is a name given to those animals which has both male reproductive organ as well as female reproductive organ. Examples are earthworms, sponges, that is polyphores, tapeworm, they are all bisexual. So they have the male reproductive part as well as the female reproductive part in the same animal. So now before we go ahead with gametes formation process, let us quickly have a recap of what is haploid and what is diploid because this is going to be very useful in the next few slides and I don't want any confusion in your mind about this. So what is haploid and what is diploid? So diploid cell is the one which has two complete sets of chromosomes. So you actually have dip, di means two. So it has two sets of chromosomes. So this is the cell inside the cell. You have the nucleus inside the nucleus. You will have the chromosomes. So if it has two sets of chromosomes, then it is diploid. So it is generally denoted as 2N. That means it has two sets of chromosomes. Whereas haploid is a cell which has single set of chromosomes, which is generally denoted by N. So here you can see this is N. So now normally when you if you consider the human body all the cells of the body cells of the body are often known as the somatic cells that is the cells of the body so all the somatic cells are diploid that is they have two complete sets of chromosomes exception are the sex cells but the sex cells in the human body are haploid now let us try to understand why this is diploid or how this is diploid and how this is haploid okay so when you consider the somatic cells that is the cells which form our body all the body cells how are those chromosomes formed they are formed by combination from father and mother right so the father contribute let us suppose here you have one blue color one red color so the red color is contributed by the mother the blue color is contributed by the father so combining the both you have a diploid set diploid chromosome in all the cells of your body that is inside your body everywhere you have traits of both father as well as mother I mean, not necessary, but somewhere with something is dominant, somewhere something is dominant, somewhere some variation is there. But as such, throughout your body, everywhere you have diploid cells. One set of chromosome from father, one set of chromosome from mother. So that is how your somatic cells are. Now, when you talk about the sex cells, these sex cells are the one who are going to fuse together to form the zygote. 
right remember the process of fertilization so these are the sex cells so they have to be haploid so that this haploid of a father will combine with another haploid of mother and then they will form a 2n which is going to be the kid so again all the body cells of the kid will be deployed except the sex cells now the question is when all the body cells are deployed, how are these haploid cells produced? So that is what we will see here. Because when I say sex cells, these sex cells are nothing but they are the gametes. And that is what we are trying to understand in this topic. That is gametogenesis. How these gametes are formed. How these haploid cells are formed. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.